morning today we will see the demo for frequency shift key the circuit is as shown here the message signal a square wave input is given at the base of the two transistors to both the transistors frequency of around 1 kilohertz and higher frequency is given at the two collectors of the transistors output is taken at the emitter of the transistor output at the emitter of the transistor is the frequency shift keying output so that is our modulated signal now the modulated signal is given the, to the demodulator circuit the input to the demodulator circuit is from the modulation circuit the first part of your circuit is the low pass filter which means that it is going to remove one set of frequencies then we have a point contact diode or an ordinary diode an r and c combination which acts as an envelope detector the op amp present at the final stage acts as a comparator to pin number 2 of the op amp we can connect it directly to the ground or else we can give a variable power supply to pin number 2 if the output is not a perfect square wave only then give a variable supply to pin number 2 what happens at pin number 2 and 3 is when the uh, voltage at pin number 3 is greater than that of pin number 2 the output is going to go to positive vsat when the output at pin number 3 is less than that of pin number 2 the output goes to negative vsat so if the output is not a perfect square wave then connect a small regulated supply at this point that we should get back the original m of t signal that we have given at the input maybe with a certain delay let's see the working of this circuit this is the message signal that we have given a message signal a square wave message signal of frequency 250 hertz is given as the input to the circuit then the two carrier frequencies are given here one carrier frequency around 1.255 kilohertz another carrier frequency in the range of 1 kilohertz is given as the input to the circuit this is the power supply that is given to the op amp this voltage is the regulated voltage that is given at pin number 2 of the op amp we are giving this voltage through a pot so that we will be able to vary even the small voltage will be able to vary and give it to pin number 2 our output voltage is the blue signal that is appearing on the cro the lo signal is our message signal a square wave input that we have given the blue signal is our output if you observe the message signal and the output signal are similar in frequency only thing is that they have a certain amount of delay if we have to calculate the amount of delay just observe the zero crossing of your message signal of the input and that of the output that difference is going to we call that as error and the output voltage of our message signal should be from from plus vsat to minus vsat so approximately we have given the we have set it at around 5 volts so we are getting a peak to peak signal of around 24 volts so we have given 12 volts power supply so our peak to peak is from plus 12 to minus 12 volts that is the demodulated signal that you are going to get at your output end this is with respect to the modulation circuit the message signal is given at this point this is an npn transistor this is the pnp transistor to we are taking the output from the collector of the npn and the pnp transistor so this is our output point okay that is given to channel 2 of the cro to channel 1 we have given the message signal so if you observe the output you can see that whenever there is a deviation of your message signal from low to high or high to low you will have another frequency that is being transmitted at m of m is equal to 1 that is when the message signal is going to be high we will have the carrier signal that is sent from the npn transistor 
when the message signal is going to be low or rather zero then we will have the message the carrier signal that is being sent through the pnp transistor that is why you will be able to observe a low frequency and a high frequency low frequency and high frequency that goes on as long as you have given your data m of 